how BlackRock, 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 BlackRock became more powerful than the Federal Reserve and the United States government. Much has been made about BlackRock, the largest financial institution in the world, and their self-proclaimed New World Order that they published as 2022 wound down. You've probably seen it at this point. Everything will change, you will own nothing and you'll love it, yada yada yada, typical global elite stuff. But what isn't typical is how BlackRock actually plans to see this through, and up until this point, no one has really looked into it, well, until now. The signs are subtle, but they are there. BlackRock has a plan, and that plan is underway, but it doesn't start where you might think. Now, I promise you, the wait will be worth it, but first, we have to go back in time. March 2021, Russian troops start lining up on the Ukrainian border, preparing for what Putin calls routine military exercises, but the world isn't quite so sure. Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of soldiers make their way westward, all under the guise of training. October 2021, Dmitry Medvedev, the deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia, publishes an article claiming that Ukraine is a vassal of the West and that the weak, ignorant and unreliable country is not worthy of dialogue, laying the pretext for what was to come. December 2021, Western intelligence agencies like the CIA and the MI6 start to report suspicions of a full-scale invasion, and while the legacy media jumps on this opportunity to warmonger and get more clicks, most people really aren't convinced. February 2022, and all hell breaks loose as under the cover of darkness, Russian troops cross the border, guns blazing, and what erupts is the greatest conflict Europe has seen since the end of the Second World War. Devastation rips across Ukraine, thousands of soldiers die on both sides, and civilians are terrorized by a conflict that they once considered unthinkable. March 2022, the war has been waging for weeks, and to the world's surprise, Ukraine is still fighting. But here's where things get really weird. BlackRock, or rather Larry Fink, the founder and CEO of BlackRock, and some might say at the most powerful man in the world, writes a letter to his investors. In it, you might have expected him to focus on the markets, on oil prices, inflation, supply chain disruptions, one of the million different financial problems that emerged as the war started, but he seemed to have a different focus. He speaks as though he were a mouthpiece for the Biden administration. He states his admiration for the Ukrainian people, the hardships they've endured, and Western military support for the country. An odd take for someone who runs a financial firm, not a non-profit charity. April 2022, BlackRock's Investment Institute deputy head, Alex Brazier, goes on to Bloomberg TV and he talks about Ukraine of all things, but he has an angle and he pushes it hard. The overarching message of this appearance is globalization is dead. The economy of the world as we know it, where gas comes from Russia, it's burned in a factory in Germany so a product can be shipped to Vietnam, assembled in China and then sold in America, well, that's all over. September 2022 and President Vladimir Zelensky, yes, that Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine, meets with Larry Fink, yes, that Larry Fink, the CEO and founder of BlackRock, the most powerful financial company in the world. A financial institution that controls assets worth over $8 trillion, twice the size, even more than that of the British economy, or a cool 50 Elon Musks. Now, what on earth could these two people possibly be talking about? One is leading a country through a war that could see the state cease to exist altogether, and the other is leading a company through a growing recession and a collapsing tech bubble that could change the world. November 2022, the Ministry of Finance of Ukraine and BlackRock once again get together to talk, catch up and plan about the future, and this time, they sign and release a memorandum of understanding, agreeing on a framework for consultative assistance in developing a special platform to attract private capital for the recovery and support of Ukraine's economy. Now that sounds like a lot of buzzwords and most people won't actually understand what was said there, and well, that's by design. Just a few days later and BlackRock put out a press release titled BlackRock Financial Markets Advisory to Advise Ministry of Economy of Ukraine, confirming that a deal has been struck and that BlackRock and Ukraine will be working together, but this strange timeline doesn't even stop there. December 2022, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink meets with Ukrainian President Zelensky again. They discussed their cooperation and even planned a trip for BlackRock's leaders to visit Ukraine in 2023, 
but this time they also discussed how Ukraine will be rebuilt after the war is over and notably how BlackRock will lead the charge and run the whole cabal. January 2022, the World Economic Forum meets in Davos, Switzerland, and who else would be attending but Ukraine and BlackRock and their delegates? The lobbying begins right away as Ukraine starts to ask not for more munitions to push the Russian forces back, not for help training Ukrainian soldiers or additional intelligence about Russia's plans from the West. No, Ukraine starts courting money. Their stated aim is financial support to rebuild Ukraine before the war is even over. And how much are they looking for? Well, $1 trillion. BlackRock representatives were literally reported as appearing upbeat, asking only for a fair and just return from their investments in Ukraine. BlackRock, a company whose only commitment is to profit, is going to spearhead the revitalization of Ukraine. They're going to flood the country with capital and business opportunities and help it to rebuild, and this is all sanctioned by both the American and Ukrainian governments. So what is actually going on here? Well, this may sound so weird and obscure that nothing like this could have ever happened before, but sadly, that's just not the case. Back in the aftermath of the Second World War, Europe was absolutely devastated by that war with tens of millions dead, cities bombed to rubble, all the while the US had actually thrived, seen its industry and economy boom, and made billions from selling arms around the world. So the United States put forward something called the Marshall Plan, which was designed to provide economic assistance to Europe to help the continent rebuild and recover. This was wildly successful as some of the money sent to Europe was loaned and that was all repaid which made for a nice little investment on America's behalf and even the money sent in the form of grants or free money ended up making the US richer. Now how did giving money away make the US wealthier? Well, it created a market that American firms could export to and trade with and so America really did prosper from this aid they gave. This is essentially what seems to be going on in Ukraine today, except there are some major problems this time around, most notably the fact that this revitalization of Ukraine isn't being run by the American government, but by the single most powerful American company. You see, this isn't the first time in the 21st century that America has tried to rebuild a country after a war and, of course, profit from the boom in that process. Iraq has one of the largest customer bases in the entire Arab world. It has one of the world's largest supplies of oil, and it has one of the best educated workforces in the region. And so it's time for the United States to start thinking of Iraq uh, as a business opportunity. I think we all know how things ended up in Iraq and the fear is obviously that Ukraine is going to go in that same direction. It will cost Americans billions of dollars, cost Ukrainians thousands of lives and just line the pockets of politicians, lobbyists and corporations. The sad truth is, when it comes to Ukraine, things really aren't looking good as crony capitalism, corporatism and corruption seem to be taking root. Back in August of 2022, a BlackRock managing director and executive called Eric von Nordstrand was hired straight into the Biden administration and his job title? He'll be a senior advisor on economic issues tied to Russia and Ukraine. This comes after Biden already hired two BlackRock executives immediately after winning the election to become president. One of those executives, by the way, was Brian Deese, who now runs the National Economic Council and was the person responsible for changing the definition of a recession so that Biden could claim all things are fine and dandy and America's economy isn't in trouble. But the connections don't even stop there. Mike Pyle used to be BlackRock's chief investment strategist until he left that job to become Kamala Harris's chief economic advisor, and it just so happens a key player when it came to sanctioning Russia. So what do we fear is happening here? Well, the idea is that BlackRock has positioned itself to profit from the destruction in Ukraine, and it's also in a position to ensure the destruction of Ukraine. These BlackRock lobbyists, who are now very powerful officials within the American government, push for more sanctions against Russia, they push for more weapons to be poured into Ukraine, essentially, they push for the war to continue and to escalate. 
The first thing that happens is that BlackRock profits from the military industrial complex. They own more than $40 billion worth of arm manufacturers. They own 16% of weapons maker Sturm, Ruger and company. They own 6% of Lockheed Martin, 5% of Boeing, 4% of General Dynamics, 6% of Northrop Grumman and 7% of Raytheon. Now what's happened to these companies over the last year since the war started? Well, they've sold more weapons, far more. Firstly, because material that they've sold to militaries in the past has been donated to Ukraine, leaving a shortfall in those generous militaries, which mean they then have to buy more. Finland donates 400 million euros worth of equipment to Ukraine, and Finland then have to buy up 400 million euros worth of equipment to make up for that shortfall. Then on top of that, these companies have also just been outright selling weapons to Ukraine themselves as well. Now, 2022 was a notoriously awful year for investors. Tesla investors lost 70% on their shares. Amazon shareholders saw their investments tumble 51%, but Lockheed Martin, they were up 37% and Raytheon, they were up 50%. Now, who do we think is the single largest shareholder of both of those companies and almost every other arms manufacturer around? Well, BlackRock. So BlackRock already profit from the war in Ukraine as it happens, as they're major shareholders of the companies which are selling all these extra weapons, and they're also in a position to ensure the war in Ukraine actually continues. But the profits that BlackRock will make from that are pennies in their eyes, mere billions. The deal to have BlackRock spearhead the rebuilding of Ukraine though, well that will be worth trillions. Every time we see headlines about a Russian cruise missile hitting some vital energy infrastructure in Ukraine, knocking out electricity for 1 million people, BlackRock know that $100 million essentially just got deposited into their bank accounts. Every time a school or a hospital is blown up and we see images of innocent civilians murdered on the streets, BlackRock just see dollar signs. A port in Odessa is bombed. The Zaporizhia nuclear plant is hit by artillery. A bridge across the Dnipro River is destroyed. The war in Ukraine has already caused $1 trillion worth of damage to this country, and it's causing an additional $4 billion every single week. And BlackRock have been given a state-mandated monopoly to run all of the investment that Ukraine is going to see. Every loan that Ukraine takes out and has to pay back, that will go through BlackRock. Every McDonald's restaurant, Nike store or Ford dealership that's built once the war is over. Every bridge, railway and road rebuilt that will all be run and funded by BlackRock. And the best thing is that BlackRock don't even need to wait for the war to end because Ukraine is pushing for this investment right now. That's why Ukraine have sent so many representatives to Davos to the World Economic Forum because it's the greatest concentration of Fortune 500 CEOs, world leaders and hedge funds the world has ever seen. They're profiting from the destruction now and they'll profit from the destruction later. And here lies the fundamental problem with what is happening here. BlackRock do not have good intentions. They don't have evil intentions either. They don't want to actively cause suffering and harm to people in Ukraine. They just want to make as much money as physically possible. And they don't care if that's done by spreading joy or by spreading terror. They exist to make money and they are incredibly good at it. Too good. They have captured the response to the Ukraine war and they have worked out exactly what to do to maximize their profits. They're ensuring that Ukraine is provided with enough weapons to stop Russia from winning and ending the war, but they're not providing Ukraine with enough weapons to push Russia out and end the war. They're making sure Ukraine is provided with enough state assistance to provoke Russia into escalating the conflict so that they send more missiles, more bombs and destroy more of Ukraine and BlackRock get to build everything back up. Ukraine is doomed to a perpetual state of war because that is what's most profitable for BlackRock. If the war ended tomorrow, then so would the destruction and BlackRock's profit from this deal would be decided then and there at $1 trillion. If the war continues for another year, they can make twice that. If it lasts for 10 years, they can make 10 times that. BlackRock have inserted their men into powerful positions in governments that allows them to dictate policy and their tentacles go so much deeper than most people realize. Here on YouTube, there are things that can't be said, verifiable facts that will lead to a channel being striked, demonetized, or just outright deleted. 
and there are things I've had to omit from this video or else you wouldn't be able to see it at all. But that's why in exactly seven days, I'll be sending out an email to everyone that signs up with the link down below in the description that will go so much deeper into the specific politicians who are causing this, into the specific businesses and CEOs that have captured the state, and I'll expose everything. It's 100% free to sign up, but you will learn something that is absolutely invaluable. Or if you just want to hear more about BlackRock and their plans to take over America in 2023, then click on this video here.